Hello and welcome to Uniform History and our inaugural series covering the United States military's transition into digital camouflage. If you haven't already, click here to watch our first video which covered the United States Marine Corps' MARPAT digital camouflage. In this video, we will be covering the Army's adoption of its universal camouflage pattern, UCP for short. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Shortly after the U.S. Marine Corps created and started issuing their digital MARPAT pattern, the Army announced their intention to do the same, but with their own camouflage. The main difference? They were aiming on creating a single universal camouflage pattern that can be worn in all terrains and environments. So in early 2002, phase one of the trials began with the goal of testing and selecting a pattern. The testing started out with six separate patterns, but was quickly narrowed down to three, all over brush, track, and shadow line. Each of these patterns had four variations, a woodland consisting of green, black, and brown, a desert consisting of khaki, dark tan, and brown, an urban consisting of light gray, medium gray, and black, and finally a desert urban consisting of brown, dark tan, and light gray. As you can see, all patterns shared one thing in common. They all had tan in their color schemes. This was done for the same reasoning the Marines had coyote brown in both of their MARPAT patterns to allow equipment and gear to be interchangeable in the off chance that more than one color scheme was selected. These 12 patterns then underwent 15 evaluations in Fort Benning, Fort Polk, Fort Irwin, and Fort Lewis. During these tests, the various patterns were rated based on their detection, contrast, blending, and brightness by various soldiers using the naked eye during the day and using night vision at night. Phase one solely consisted of side-by-side -side daytime testing with distances maxing at 590 feet. Immediately after the tests, the shadow line pattern and its four variants were outright eliminated, as was the urban and desert urban patterns in all over brush. This left the woodland and desert patterns in all over brush in all four of tracks patterns, which then moved on to the next phase. At this point, a fourth pattern, simply referred to as Contractor Developed, which was co-created by defense contractor Cry Precision, was introduced into the testing. This pattern, later referred to as Scorpion, was made to different specifications in that it included six separate colors instead of four like the other patterns. In phase two, the remaining patterns were evaluated separately during both day and night but also were evaluated at much closer distances which maxed at 390 feet. Just about every phase saw the remaining patterns modified, but the largest came during phase three. During phase three, it was determined that only three colors were effective in near infrared. Those colors were medium gray, black, and medium tan. Phase four, also known as the system level, saw the creation of body armor, knee and elbow pads, belts, and molly gear. Up until this point, the testing was done with bolts of fabric and standard BDUs consisting of jackets, pants, and helmet covers. With the final phase coming to a close, the results were in and showed different patterns proved more effective in different environments. The mean visual rating for the desert variant of brush scored the highest. Woodland track found itself in second place, usually falling a few points below desert brush while Urban Track almost always performed the worst and found itself at the bottom of the list. Scorpion received the highest ranking in woodland environments but performed badly in desert and urban ones. So, as you can see here, Desert Brush was announced the clear winner, so much so that it was, quote, significantly better than the other three systems. In second came Woodland Track, then Contractor Develop Mod, and finally Urban Track. Clearly, Desert Brush wasn't adopted. So what happened then? Well, UCP happened. Shortly after the testing concluded in 2004, the universal camouflage pattern was announced by the Army. Though it was not part of the testing, it was selected as the final pattern to be adopted by all Army forces. So where did it come from? Once again, we can look to Canada's CADPAT for the answer. Initially, the U.S. Army claimed that UCP was simply a digitized version of Track's urban variant, Though, much like the controversy which surrounded MARPAT's creation, many point out that the design was once again borrowed from Canada and tweaked for their own purposes. The colors were altered to a medium tan, medium gray, and a dark gray. 
officially known as Desert Sand 500, Urban Gray 501, and Foliage Green 502. If you remember, these colors proved to be the most effective in the near-infrared testing. However, black was dropped because it's not often found in nature, as well as the fact that when viewed through night vision goggles, it can give off a high contrast, thusly becoming more noticeable. This sentiment, however, was not shared by many, including the Marines. With no rigorous field testing, the pattern was adopted and issued in the form of the newly designed Army Combat Uniform, or ACU for short. The main differences between the old BDUs and the new ACUs was a new Mandarin-style collar, slanted pockets, a zippered front, and the utilization of Velcro for pocket closures, the attaching of unit patches on the upper arms, and a rank patch worn on the chest. Additionally, boonie hats and patrol caps remained mostly unaltered, but were now printed in UCP. The ACU uniforms were first issued to the 48th Infantry Brigade combat team for field testing. Not long after, May 2005 to be exact, the unit was sent to Iraq, where the reviews were mixed. Not only because of the pattern, but because of the poor durability and continuous maintenance it required. This did not stop the rollout, and soon US troops in both Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as around the world, began receiving the new camouflage. It didn't take long for more complaints and criticism to start rolling in, though. Not only were soldiers voicing problems with the design and cut of the uniform, but with the camouflage's overall inability to blend into the terrains found in the Middle East. As it turned out, the scale and colors of the pattern caused an optical effect called isoluminance. This effect causes the human eye to see various colors and patterns as a single mass, thusly rendering the UCP camouflage almost useless. This eventually led to a congressional investigation which ultimately resulted in H.R. Bill 2346, which required the Department of Defense to quote, take immediate action to provide combat uniforms to personnel deployed to Afghanistan with a camouflage pattern that is suited to the environment of Afghanistan. So in the second half of 2009, the U.S. Army began the process of finding a new more effective pattern for troops in Afghanistan which would be dubbed OEFCP, or Operation Enduring Freedom Camouflage Pattern. In September of 2009, two new patterns were issued to a select number of troops operating in Afghanistan. Half received a new variant of UCP called UCP Delta, or UCP D for short. The other half received Cry Precision's Multicam. UCP Delta was an attempt to take the already existing pattern and alter its colors in hopes that the uniforms would not need a massive overhaul. As you can see here, the only changes made was the inclusion of a darker brown into the pattern. After a short period, it was determined that UCPD was unsuccessful, and Multicam proved to be the superior pattern. The Universal Camouflage pattern is now slated to be entirely retired by the Army by October 1st, 2019. So that about does it. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining and informative. If you want to see the official full-length documents I used for this video, I've uploaded them to Imager. You can find them in the link provided in the description below. Be sure to check back and subscribe for future videos and keep an eye out for the third video in the US military's modern camouflage series, in which I will go over Scorpion, Multicam, and the eventual adoption of the operational camouflage pattern, aka OCP.